Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get singles for all your Force of Will and other trading card games, as well as these amazing patrons. Extra special thanks to guest lecturer patron Ryan Lilly. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Hey there, rulers. Welcome back to Ruler School. This is DMO73, and I am joined with by... Uh, Joe from Deep Wood Team. And uh, Leon Fox from... I don't know, Earth? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we are here to talk to you about um, Conqueror formats. Uh, these guys had a big hand in the creation of the format. Um, so I thought I would take some time to talk with them kind of about how the format got started, what it means, and if you haven't been introduced to the concept before, explain it to you. Um, so we can talk about this cool uh, fan-made format and kind of... Um, how it potentially, how it came to be, how it's going to potentially evolve, uh, and just give you a taste of it, and then come back tomorrow where we're going to have a nice little match between myself and Joe, showing you kind of what Conqueror looks like. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and, and jump right in. So, when looking at this format, it is an Eternal style format, very similar to Wanderer, where we have access to all the cards, but that's about where the similarity stops. Um, so, can you guys tell us a little bit about the kind of initial uh, mentality of like why this format was even being created? Uh, for sure. Um, so, like Wanderer is definitely a format that we had loved for a while because it just lets us play with our old cards, you know, like the stuff we're nostalgic for, the stuff that's the stuff that draws us into Wanderer, but what obviously puts us off from Wanderer is the actual, like, meta that Wanderer is built off of, because you have, like, I mean, you have Hanzo Myths, you have Omri Combo, you just have decks that are way too dominant in the format, and that are not, like, decks that represent how Force of Will is intended to be played. These are decks that look more like how Yu-Gi-Oh would be played or sure. something like that. Like spiking, um, just kind of like punish kind of decks. Exactly. Right. Like you you may, you may lose one counter war in the Hanzo Myths and it just snowballs into you losing the game. Sure. Like that kind of stuff. Uh, sure. Or the Umra decks just, okay, you let Heroic Epic resolve, you just lost the game. Like that kind of stuff. So it's kind of just like where we want to for one, remove these overpowered uh, decks or just unfun decks. And for the other, also, um, in general, balance out like the power level to where not only are there no real overpowered decks, but also the rulers that are like not really getting much love, the rulers that not are being not, that aren't really being played a lot for them to like shine again. The older rulers obviously not having energized, so um I mean, okay, we haven't really talked about the changes, but basically yeah, we'll, get, we'll just... get there in a little bit, yeah. I was gonna yeah. I just wanna add that we also wanted to bring back a little bit of the nostalgia of what it was like to play Force of Will over the last couple of years, um, and be able to play some of these really powerful rulers that were just a bit too overpowered. Um, things like uh Nine Tailed Fox at full power, Prissy at full power, Lumia at full power, Sherry at full power. All of those rulers are just really cool concepts, but because they were just so overpowered in their state and they wind up getting banned, the actual ruler winds up getting banned from Wanderer or their like key card that makes them important gets banned. It's it makes it so that you can't play these like nostalgic matches where you have like your uh golden days type met matchups. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh I guess one like important like sort of uh, what you say? How'd you say? Proclaimer or something? Uh, is that we are fully aware that while the goal is to make as much stuff viable as possible, so that you can live out your dreams of whatever like old stuff you want to play, it is important to realize that your tier four deck is never gonna be like. We're never going to create a format where it is like on par with all the other decks. That's not the goal sure. to make it's... everything equally strong because that's impossible. Right. But it's more of a, it seems like the mission statement is really to be like, y you, you have a concept of a deck that you really love, used to love playing, 
and we make it so that you can play that again. Um, or if it's an older deck, we make it so that you can play it um, even when faced with, not necessarily win all the time, but you can at least play that um, at a similar-ish pace to what the newer cards have been introduced. Like, you're not just like, well, as soon as I flip my ruler and see that, I know that I'm clearly going to lose. You just wanted to make it so that you can at least play everything even if you're not going to win. Right. Exactly. That cool. sums it up pretty well. Cool, cool. So, who... Um, obviously, both of you have worked really hard on this format. Um, were you? Can you tell us a little bit about like how it actually got created? Like, the process of how the format got created? Uh, I think Joey should answer that because he and Ben were mainly involved in it in the Origins. Yeah, early on, uh, Ben had the idea for the Conqueror format, and he kind of like ran ran around with it. Um, he wound up like pitching it to a couple of voices after the initial blowback from community as being like, "Oh, you're just trying to take over Wanderer," uh, which wasn't really the purpose. Which is why we kind of shifted it a little bit to make it a little bit more unique from what Wanderer's mission statement sure. was. Um, so from there, we wind up targeting out like specific things in terms of rulers trying to make a ban list that is a bit more uh well well rounded but doesn't sure. but then lets you play more rulers and that was kind of like the here let's go with this game plan and try and go as far as we can with it cool so when you're talking about trying to make it different than wanderer right we said at the beginning that the similarity kind of stops when you just think about the fact that we can just play every single card um how how can you, can you kind of explain exactly how conqueror format works or like what the big changes are uh the most important parts would be the like core changes first of all we have energize on every single ruler regardless of if the card says energize or not so every card cool. before Lapis Cluster has Energize 1, which nice. basically matches the attribute. Uh, we also have Limited Regalia, which is Regalia that must mention the name of the card in order to function with it. So Melgus gets Levitine. Uh, most of the Kagias get Apollo, except for TSW, because we have a specific stipulation against it. Um, we also have a little bit of a nerf on Rune Decks, because just Divinity in general is one of the most powerful mechanics in Wanderer as a whole. So we were just trying to shut that down in the meantime so that we could balance everything else. Sure. Uh, and that, and so, so the the Rune Deck is how many cards now? It's three, right? Yeah, we, yeah. Min we minimized it to three for a short time sure. just to make sure that we can like balance around everything else before bringing back Divinity and making sure that it is as powerful as it can be. Okay. In general, that's the state of things right now. Like, uh, obviously, the ban list is different to Wander. I think, obviously, a lot more what... cards. Exactly, and um, I think that uh, that's like kind of the state of everything. Divinity represents that very well. That we still have to like test the waters on all the stuff. So. I mean, we have our first tournament running right now, so from those results, we'll change it, and then from the next tournament, we'll change it from those results, and so on, until yeah. eventually we've formed something we're happy with. And so, um, you had mentioned that like some of the rulers at full power, um, you know, were still just super strong, and so like you guys wanted to kind of tweak it so that they could still be playable, but they just weren't played at that like full overarching overpoweredness. Can you kind of talk about kind of which rulers were hit and maybe you how you hit them? Uh, yeah, for so sure. First thing uh, on our uh, list would be uh, Speaker of Eternal Night, Cherry. Okay. Uh, instead of her Grimoire, we would decide to just remove that entirely because having a deck of Silver Bullets is a bit too much. And then we replaced it with uh, a new legend mechanic, which is just equal to the number of magic stones you have minus one. Oh, okay, cool. So like that means that like any of the cards that refer to legend, just say like legend then becomes number of stones minus one, and that's whatever your current legend value is. Yeah, as long as yeah, you're playing Sherry. And also later, uh, we also added that cards that mention like how many cards are flipped up in your story deck because uh eva and eve are worded in another way than legend so, so yeah, wait so how would that work too. so how would that work with eva then because eva used to have a max bonus of five but if she's been changed to legend 
Uh, legend cannot exceed five. Legend okay. cannot exceed five. Legend there we go. Five. That's that fixes that. Cool. Awesome. So you guys have really kind of thought that through. Has anybody else kind of seen any big changes? Uh, next, uh, we did have some slight learn nerfs, but the bigger nerfs, but the bigger changes would be like to nine tailed fox. Uh, oh, we can... um, yeah, actually, on. sorry, one thing about cherry that uh will be added later, we just forgot about it, uh, is that. Um, you can now sideboard other rulers into Sherry since she doesn't have oh, the story sure. deck oh, since anymore. she doesn't have the story deck. That makes sense. Yeah. Just yeah, thought kind of I'd mention thing. it. Yeah. Um, so Nine-Tailed Fox, we decided to... Um, wait, wait, move. let me go over Fox. He's my boy. <laughs> okay, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, um, we moved the Shuffle Killing Stones from your grave, uh... In, back into your magic stone deck to the front of the ruler and it's been removed from the J ruler side so you have to jump through some hoops to like out grind like in the later right, right, games right. with like because... um, high speed dash to like flip them back over exactly. yeah yeah exactly and like you need genesis to get more stones or stuff like that because with like griffin so griffin isn't banned in this format crazy right Oh, okay. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. You can build it, so you can build a lot of tempo, right? Obviously, because Griffin is insane. So we kind of wanted to like balance that out a bit by saying, okay, but then you don't have the insane grind game. You have to like invest into that, right? Sure. Into okay. Yeah. yeah so um, you still get that like turn one killing stone gas opening with Fox if you wind up getting lucky, but you don't oh, yeah, have that sure. wind up sustain on top of it. Or at least sure. it's a bit more difficult. Sure. Okay. And um, important also is that uh, you can um, you can only fuse now, like on the J ruler side, on your turn. So. Oh, okay. You, so we can't make you stuff can't on your opponent's the fusions, which is extreme an extremely relevant change because, like, yeah, as sure. a fox player, always the fusions on your opponent's turn are like the impactful ones like right the fusions on your own turn feel like win more fusions right but the ones on your opponent's turn are the ones that are quite, kind of crucial because it still leaves you with some form of reactiveness but since we took that away it's become a way more like one trick pony deck where you really have to like focus on your one way of winning and protect that or otherwise you kind of you know screwed okay yeah, I like that um, fix. Yeah, it's just it definitely like changes the dynamic of the deck up a lot. Um, and then we added that as long as we uh, you have your J ruler out, uh, cards in your graveyard cannot be moved from your graveyard to your deck. Uh, that's like for so you can't shuffle Zeke's. back killing stones. Yeah, with so you Zeke's. can't like Zeke's and stuff. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's a little uh, bit just, of a like over the top errata to make it so that Fox is playable. Just but, doesn't get outside of control. Right. It's like we wanted to keep it within flavor, but make it so that there is a weakness to Fox's strategy. Cool. And so the other ones that you hit, if I remember correctly, you hit Lumia. And if I remember correctly, the change is that if you flicker, it comes back at the beginning of the next turn. Right. Yeah. Right, rather than the end of your same turn, so you don't get quite as much value out of it. Uh, and then it's like you miss an attack, so you, right. you're sort of getting punished for it. Right. Although, um, actually, I was playing uh, a Lumia deck with like knights and shit, and actually, it uh, benefited me super hard because my Lancelot had swiftness so I just like protected it for a turn more so if you're removing stuff with swiftness you're actually benefiting off of that. The change wound up being really interesting because it benefited different archetypes than what the traditional Lumia deck would It's gonna play, right. Play. Yeah, like if you want to play your standard like I'm gonna flicker a bunch of powerful enter effects, it's gonna be a lot slower because most of those powerful flicker effects don't have swiftness, and you're gonna wind up missing turns where you can try and swing in with those. Right. So now you have like I want to play swiftness thing so I can get that flicker every turn and get some power out of it. Yeah. Cool. 
Um, With, and was there any other uh, ruler that was directly changed? Uh, Prisia. Ah, uh, yes. Prisia, Prisia was hit with a hammer. <laughs> yeah. I believe it's you have to pay now for her resonance, right? So like yeah. resonance and yeah. then pay one. Yes. You have to pay the like corresponding. So for fire, you pay a red, and for wind, you pay a green. Right. And her judgment is now red, green, green. Okay. And your god's art is now red, red, green. And so it's not um, super cheap. Great, I love it. <laughs> yeah. The one thing that we kind of went a little bit too far on is that her uh, enter ability no longer triggers on attack as well. Oh, okay. Which, which was kind of yeah. like the big enabler for OTK. Right. Double uh, cycle. It's a little bit. It was a little bit going too far, but we really wanted to like tone her back before yeah, throwing her into the, the format. That's the beauty of the format, right? Is that you'll be able to make adjustments on the fly yeah. as needed. Exactly. Yeah, so, and you guys have sure. a, you guys have a team of like what five? Who are kind yes. of like uh, yeah. working on We're the five format? We're five people right now. That's uh, she's for sure like one of the things to look at because we're fully aware that she's very weak right now so we want to get her into a state where she's like playable but isn't really the terror she used to be yeah awesome well um the best way for people to get plugged into wanderer there's a facebook or sorry for conqueror my apologies is there's a facebook group specifically for conqueror right yes yeah. okay cool well i will put description for that group down below so you guys can go check it out and join it uh in that group you guys have the official updated cr and the ban list right yep they're both in the yep. same so uh, same, same sheet there's so it's probably a there's probably a pinned post like somewhere i think sweet so it should be easy to find cool well i definitely recommend uh, everybody who's watching go check that out for sure join in um i've had a chance to try the format out myself <laughs> Uh, and I definitely can see um, kind of what you're talking about in terms of it definitely allows players to play like the old decks they want to play, but just like kind of revamped slightly or kind of brought back yeah. to being able to be playable or brought back down to not being oppressive. Um, you know, and it, and I would encourage people who are watching that uh, want to pick it up is that's the way it definitely feels like that's the way this format is meant to be played. As it is with just the way Force of Will works, there are going to be decks out there that are just like hard spikes. Um, but it definitely feels like you guys are working to create this format in a way that it's like, okay, it's about fun. Like if you want to go spike people, just yeah. go play Wanderer. Like Exactly. Like you can be that guy and play like the ridiculous deck, but if you're playing this format, I mean, you're not gaining anything from being that guy in this format there aren't like any grand prix or anything right. like you you want to have fun if you're playing this format so yeah sweet um any kind of last final more... thoughts uh well, definitely i want you guys to get interested in the format and like reach out to us and let us know like hey i really want to make this more viable and such and such get something off the ban list like if we de we're definitely open to discussion we really love hearing people just like say hey i like this let's let's find a way to make this work and then we'll see what we can do because that's what this format's all about just making trying to make people happy yeah for sure we just hope that you can get involved in it like at least give it a try or something because it is a very community driven format and the more people we get on board to just like be on this train where we're like yeah we all just want to have a good time that's why we're playing this like fun format i think that's kind of where we're going to go and that's like the people we want like cool yes stuff. you may you may try and break our format but you know it's not really what it's meant for exactly sweet well, thank you guys so much um, for checking it out. Again, for everybody who's watching, please go check out those links down below to get into the Facebook group and get all the information. And uh, like we said, come back tomorrow uh, because Joey and I are actually going to go play a match right now. Uh, and I am actually going to be playing um, to give you kind of hyped. I'm a huge Sherry fan, so I'm actually looking forward to kind of playing this nerf down Sherry. Um, and uh, what are you going to be playing, Joey? I'm going to be playing some weird-ass Xion list that's going to make people wonder why it what i'm doing <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, sounds good. Um, <laughs> but uh, until next time, this has been Jeremy Franklin, DMO73, and I've been joined by... Uh, Joe from the Deepwood team. And Dan Fox, the guy. And we will see you guys next time, so class dismissed. See ya. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. <laughs>